Staffordshire University to uh, talk to about talk to us about policing careers and entry routes at Staffordshire University. Thank you so much. Hello everyone, uh, my name's Beth and I am a Recruitment Development Officer and I work at Staffordshire University um, and as you can see uh, we have a partnership with four regional police forces so that's Staffordshire Police, West Midlands Police, West Mercia Police and Warwickshire Police and what we do in partnership with those police forces um, is we offer our policing oh, programme and oh, what I will do, do, oh I can hear myself Someone's microphone on. She turned it on. Wonderful. So what I'm going to do today um, is talk about the entry route into policing, um, focusing specifically on the PCDA, um, which is the Police Constable Degree Apprenticeship. Um, and I'll also go over the um, in, in, a bit briefly the other sort of routes into policing um, and, and how they work. So just to leave that there for a short while for you to either take down um, or copy. Um, if you have any policing related inquiries at all, um, whether they're sort of anything that I'm going to talk about this evening or any of our undergraduate courses, if you can please sorry, oh, email that inbox um, and I can either answer the question for you, uh, one of my colleagues can answer the question for you or we'll pass it on to the relevant department within the university. Um, so that as a starting point, uh, please make sure that you take this email address down. Okay, so um, firstly, I'm going to discuss uh, something called PEQF. You may have heard of this before, you may not have done. It stands for Policing Education Qualification Framework. Um, it's a professional training uh, framework for police officers and staff. It's based on a very modern curriculum of dynamic operational training underpinned by sound theoretical education. Okay, so that's quite the ethos of what we do here at Stafford University in partnership with the forces. So um, the PCDA, which is the apprenticeship, and the other route that I'm also going to talk about um, focuses mainly on sort of dual, there are, there, there are two things that um, sort of happen alongside one another. One of them is that you have um, study, uh, the academic bit, um, and which is the off the job learning and the other bit is where you are operational working in the field on the ground as a police constable so um, the, those two things are always running alongside each other throughout the duration of the courses um, and it's currently focused on new joiners to the police force um, and it's been developed to cover a range of professional training um, which may include some uh, voluntary roles um, and offices all levels okay um, and what it really ultimately was put together um, to do is to recognise the level at which police officers actually operate. They have a heavy responsibility, um, quite an intense job role, uh, very varied. Um, and it was important um, that we, we, we look at exactly what um, police officers do. You know, they protect our community and um, they're very um, good at what they do. And in, in sort of recognition of that we need to give them the right skills that, uh, that, that they need and that ultimately is a, is a degree. And we also wanted to standardise the learning provision across all forces, okay, so all forces nationally now will be working towards this PQF and they will all be doing the same thing um, to ensure that all police officers and constables within sort of nationally will have the same education. Um, and as I mentioned previously, we've got four um, partnerships that we work, um, police forces that we work with um, and we've also got a range of courses that are aligned, aligned with this uh, framework. Ultimately, if a course is um, what they call PEQF approved, then it means that the path that you follow, whichever it is, as long as it's PEQF approved, then you it will be recognised by any police force. OK, so that's the good news. So it's, uh, like I said before, everything is standardised nationally um, and you can take that anywhere ultimately. So the key objectives of today's presentation is why someone would choose policing, the entry routes into policing, the application process, um, studying to become a police constable or a detective constable. And then there's also some useful links at the end um, to have a look at recruitment for the different forces. Now, this won't work. Um, however, I absolutely encourage you to watch it. It is a video put together by Staff Police, so Staffordshire Police Force. It's brilliant. Um, if you don't want to take down that long-winded um, email address, uh, sorry, web link, then go on to the Staffordshire University YouTube page, uh, type in policing, and this will probably be at the top. 
Um, it's really inspirational. It gives you an insight um, as to what it's like to be a police constable day to day. Um, and it's definitely worth a watch. Why would someone choose policing? So quite a lot of people really have that urge to just make a difference to the community. Um, it's a very varied and diverse job. No day, uh, no day is the same. One day you may be on response policing. The next week you could be doing some investigation work. There's a lot of work in the community, a bit of information and intelligence work. There's lots of progression and develop, development opportunities within the police force. Um, I'm sure you've heard before, um, they have a very generous pension scheme, a good starting salary and good annual leave entitlement too. So the policing entry route at Staffordshire University, um, as I um, as said at the beginning, I'm going to be focusing mostly on the PCDA, which as you can see here, here is the Police Constable Degree Apprenticeship. We also have something called the DHEP. Now, the DHEP isn't just specific to the, the policing programmes. It just stands for Degree Holder Entry Programme. You might see DHEP, um, vary DHEP across different universities in different areas. Um, but mostly, um, we obviously use, use the phrase because you need to have a degree to come onto the programme. So we offer two Degree Holder Entry Programmes, and that is the Police Constable and the Detective Constable, DHEP. Um, there's also, uh, I'm, going to, I'm also going to touch briefly on the professional policing and the policing and criminal investigation degrees, which is often referred to as PCI. However, um, take note, there is a talk next Thursday evening at quarter past four, the same time as um, this afternoon, um, from Ian Ackerley. And he is um, responsible for the um, policing degrees at Staffordshire University and he is going to be going into detail more so than I will into the professional policing degree which is PQF approved so that means that once you do that degree you're able to go into the police force as a police constable the only bit that you haven't got obviously is the operational training but it's that that sort of is different depending on which force you apply the policing and criminal investigation degree is not PEQF approved that doesn't mean it's not good it just means it's not geared for you to become a police constable um, it, it, it gives you sort of a, a very re wide range of job opportunities on completion of that degree um, I'm not going to say anything more about those degrees because like I say Ian Ackley is going to be delivering the talk at quarter past four next Thursday to talk about policing degrees um, you'll also have the opportunity to ask him questions about any other undergraduate policing related degrees he will know the answers so make a note of that okay so the Police Constable Degree Apprenticeship, what is it? So it's a combination of full-time work and study. So it's a three-year programme. So as I touched on before, you'd be employed full-time as a police constable and you'd also be studying off the job. So you'll have allocated time to do your degree, do the assignments, attend the lectures, do that kind of bit, as well as being a police constable effectively. On completion of that, you'll be awarded a BSc professional policing practice degree so it's a full degree um, and mostly it is delivered online and at the fourth location so obviously this is a pre and and or post COVID-19 situation at the moment everything has been delivered remotely due to the circumstances but in normal everyday life there is a combination of online study and there's also a combination of um face-to-face -face study now it's important just to say and mention at this particular point that you will not be expected to come onto Staffordshire University campus at Stoke-on-Trent. So let's say, for example, you decide to choose to uh, you, you decide to choose West Midlands Police Force. It's a police force that's ultimately based in Birmingham. You will not be required to travel from Birmingham to Staffordshire University. Okay, all the teaching that is delivered face to face will be delivered face to face relative to that fourth location. Um, so. Um, like I say, pre-COVID, um, all the teaching for all the four forces face-to-face -face happened within those sort of vicinities. So Warwickshire, um, West Mercia, West Midlands and Staffordshire Police, all the face-to-face -face teaching happened within those locations. Um, and also there's a lot of online learning, as mentioned, for convenience. 
There's lots of block learning complemented by operational rotation. So what that basically means is you'll do a module with us with the university, and then you'll also have operational rotations and shift patterns that complement that particular learning. So for example, you'll be doing a, a module about response policing, and then you'll be um, deployed into an operational rotation. So on the ground in the field within that particular module. So you'll be doing some response policing work. So the work that you do as a police constable will be complemented by the work that you're doing at the university at the same time. So it all falls together really nicely. The really, really um, amazing benefit of the PCDA is, as you probably heard, there's no tuition fees um, and you get paid. So you don't have to pay anything to do the degree and you also get an annual salary as well. It's usually around a minimum of 21000 a year as a star. So that's a brilliant, brilliant salary um, to start off with. Um, it's actually um, funded by the um, by the apprenticeship levy, but I'm not. I won't go into detail um, because it's not important. Um, but you won't be liable to pay for that. Now, in order to get a place onto the PCDA, you must pass the police recruitment process, um, and I'll go into detail into that um, a little bit later. Um, and now, these are these next two points are really significant. Okay, so you must have your maths and English level two. So it says here GCSE, that because that is the equivalent of a level two learning. Um, so if you've got a GCSE in your maths and English, and those are grades nine to four, which is the, obviously the new numbering system, or A star to C, that's perfect. Um, if you don't have your GCSE maths, but you've perhaps got functional skills level two, um, or key skills level two, uh, something like that, then you'll also be eligible. It just needs to be a level two standard, okay? As your level three um, qualification, you're required to have a minimum of 64 UCAS points. So whatever you're doing or you have done at college, you need to be able to have a minimum of 64 UCAS points to apply. Um, if you don't have 64 UCAS points, then you won't be eligible to apply. And it's as simple as that. So make sure that you get the best results that you possibly can out of your, sim out of your level three. Um, and if you don't get what, what's required at the end of it, um, perhaps look to want to take another qualification just to get you up to that level. Um, and as mentioned earlier, the benefit is fully funded in salary too. Don't know why that's out to us. Apologies for that. Um, again, so if, you, if you're unsure whether you qualify, um, you've got a level three qualification, you're not too sure what that's going to give you at the end of it, although your college should be able to help you with that. Um, or you've got a few, um, quite, you've got some questions about the level two math and English that you've got. Um, you're not quite sure if it is a level two standard. You want to know whether it's acceptable or not. Um, again, use that inbox so send us your qualifications ask the question and we can assess it for you and let you know whether it, it is or it, it isn't acceptable i'm sure that you know this already uh, but ucas points are a way of measuring the relative value of all post-16 qualifications at a level three standard and um, if you want to know what your qualifications are worth and um, they're usually on the ucas calculator so here's the website um, and you can find your qualification and it will tell you how much that qualification is worth you may have past merit uh, different sort of UCAS points for a past merit or distinction um, so yeah that's usually how you how you're able to find out if your level three qualification isn't on the UCAS calculator again contact us send us the qualification and we can uh, have a look at it for you and let you know so the degree holder entry program um, I'm going to talk about this because you may decide that you want to go on to university um, and do a degree and you're not sort of ready for that sort of on the job experience just yet. Um, so the degree holder entry programme is eligible for those who are graduates. So they've got a degree already. OK, so it's got to be a full degree, not just a level six qualification. Um, and again, it's a combination of full time work and study. But rather than it being a three year course like the PCDA, it is a two year course. Um, on completion, you're awarded a graduate diploma, which is a level six qualification in professional policing practice. practice. Again, you must pass the recruitment process. And there are two DHEF, which is the Degree Holder Entry Programme, routes available. One for um, to become a police constable and one to become a detective constable. Um, again, available only for applicants who already got a degree. Um, some forces may require you to have what's called a DHEP relevant degree, which basically means that they want it to be sort of aligned to policing. So, for example, you could have um, a degree in psychology and criminal investigation, and they would consider that relevant. Um, so you'd be able to transfer those, that skill, those skills and the knowledge that you've learned within that degree over into the PC or the DC DHEP. Um, again, if you um, 
obviously none of you are at that point yet but if you've got any questions about that and how the exact, exactly that works or perhaps what degree you would like to roll, enroll on to in order to have the opportunity to do the DHEF get in touch with us on that police recruitment um, email address and we can definitely answer the question for you um, again the DHEP, it's not funded by the apprenticeship levy, which is a government scheme, but it is fully funded. So the police force pay for it and you're also earning a salary at the same time. Again, um, about benefits of joining uh, policing in that respect. I'm not going to talk about this because Ian Ackley is going to talk about this next week. Um, if you've just joined or you haven't joined from the beginning, again, that's next Thursday evening at quarter past four. Ian Ackley from Stafford University is going to talk about the pre-joined degree and the PCI degree, which is Policing and Criminal Investigation, and he's going to go into detail into those degrees specifically. Um, and those are degrees, so you're not working as a police uh, in the police force at the same time. You are literally doing three years worth of study for both of those at university. So um, just to mention, if you decide that you, um, you've you done the PCDA um, and you've qualified and you perhaps want to look into some master opportunities, maybe you want to specialise in um, a certain field or you want to look go into police um, leadership, um, then again, get in touch with us. We can definitely help you on your postgraduate journey. So just to give you an idea um, about um, studying at Stafford University, just briefly, so you've got a bit of a picture of what that looks like. Um, as I mentioned earlier, uh, your typical timetable will include lots of virtual learning that will give you access to Blackboard, which is the virtual learning environment, lots of webinars, online lectures, and um, quite a lot of the um, assessments are very varied. So please don't think that you're sort of coming into the, the PCDA or the DHEP if you decide to go down that route and you're writing essay after essay. There's lots of multiple choice questionnaires and quizzes where everybody gets involved, posters to complete presentations to deliver to one another, um, vo um, a voiced over presentation that's assessed. There's lots of different and various assessment methods. Um, and, and the student, the feedback that we've got so far is that the students really enjoy the varied assessment methods um, because they're very practical um, and you're, you're not just sitting there writing sort of 2,000 word essays. Um, so that's a very, very positive uh, thing to talk about. As mentioned before, there's a lot of face-to-face -face study, um, usually pre and post COVID-19, um, and that's delivered. You, you sort of have face-to-face -face study with the university and the force. Um, again, just to mention, this is just for the PCDA and the DHEP. Um, there's a lot of independent learning required. Okay, so whilst you do have the opportunity to come together in a classroom, whether that be a virtual one or a face-to-face -face one, the onus is very much on you to make sure that you do go away and you do complete the work on your own if needs be. If there's anything outstanding, um, anything like that, you need to make sure that you are going home and having a look into that and doing some independent learning. There is on the job training, okay, um, I've mentioned this before, um, but you will be a police constable on your first day on the programme, you'll be wearing a uniform like in this lovely picture here, so this is the first, the very first PCDA that the university ever did, that was 2019 and that was the Staffordshire Police, so you'll be in uniform on the first day, um, obviously you won't be required to go out on your own, you'll have mentors um, work and work buddies at all times um, as uh, police officers and police constables uh, but you will be in the role of a police constable on your very first day of the PCDA or the DHEP if that's the route that you decide to choose. Just because you're not attending Staffordshire University campus uh, we still support you wholeheartedly so there are lots of student support services if you've got any um, learning support needs or disabilities any, anything like dyslexia, dyspraxia, dyscalculia, anything like that we are absolutely um, willing to help um, that's our ethos. We want to make sure that no matter what, we can all get you and um, put you in the right direction and make sure you've got every bit of support that you need. Um, there are lots of mentor and work-based education officers that are involved with um, this particular uh, policing um, world, so to speak. So throughout the programmes, you'll have lots of support from a learning mentor as well as a work-based education officer. So if you're doing the police constable degree apprenticeship, you'll have a work-based education officer. It's often short to WBEO. They'll check in with you all the time to make sure that you're doing OK. You, if you're struggling with uh, an element, perhaps say um, you decide to um, explain that you're having a bit of trouble with referencing or you're not quite sure how to punctuate, anything like that, then they will help you, put you in touch with the right people within university to make sure that you're ultimately you, you're, you're on the right tracks and you're doing what you need to be doing. As mentioned um, above, there's lots of learning and disability support. 
Um, there's a assignment survival kit. So our library are really, really good um, at giving you the resources to be able to complete assignments. So if you do have, um, and when I was at university, I, I, I still can't, I'm really, really terrible at referencing. Um, they will help you with any element of writing essays or assignments, whatever it is, they'll be able to give you that survival kit to make sure um, that, that, you, that they will be drilling it into you to make sure that every time you get that right, um, there's lots of clubs and societies as well. Um, as I've said before, again, try to imagine this pre and post COVID. I know it's really difficult at the moment, but just because you're not on campus, it doesn't mean you can't come and have a drink at our student union or come and speak to other people that are doing different policing degrees. There's a breadth of opportunity on our campus. Just because you don't come and learn on our campus, it doesn't mean that you can't access any of the facilities, okay, the gym, the student union, um, the, all the places, that sort of the restaurants and things that we've got on campus. It's a very buzzing campus usually and if you decide to come and use the library, you want to do a bit of work, you need a bit of peace and quiet, then you're absolutely welcome to come and use our facilities, obviously providing it's not, it's, uh, not inconvenient for you. Um, so pathways into policing, this just gives you a very uh, brief idea of which route you'd be eligible depending on your circumstances. Um, again, I'm not going to go sort of too much into this, I've explained that quite a bit. Um, up to now so you've got I think you've got a clear idea of which, which um, route that you'd be eligible for so the police application process so this can be quite a complicated one um, and this is why we go into so much detail so you're probably thinking this is really really detailed but this is why it, it is so detailed because we want you to know exactly how it works from start to finish so if you want to make notes about this then feel free um, alternative life, alternatively like um Paul's pointed out you can ask questions at the end or you can email me um, it's completely up to you. So the recruitment process and this is for the PCDA and or the DHEP. As with any job you'll have to complete an application form okay so you've got to complete a, um, a pack whether that be an online one or a paper one depends on which force you apply then you will have a, um, an application form to fill out personal details, previous employment you know, the qualifications that you've got, all the stuff you'd expect to be part of the application form. Uh, sometimes within that application form, although quite a lot of forces have dropped um, this bit because of COVID-19 um, and they've got a different process now, um, it's sometimes something called CBQ and that basically stands for competency-based questions. It's usually at the end of the application form and it asks you questions um, in terms of what would you do in a certain situation? How would you behave in this situation? Um, that kind of thing. So they're trying to look at the quality, your personal um, experiences that you've had that will um, shape you as a police constable. Um, as I've said, um, quite a lot of forces aren't doing that at the moment and they're doing something that's called a behavioural judgment test instead. And the reason that they've switched from the paper version to the online version is just simply because of COVID-19. Um, it, so it's an online test that you complete now. I don't know whether that will change, um, but either way, you will be expected as part of the application process to answer some questions about what you would do in certain scenarios so the police forces are able to get an idea of how exactly you would behave in that situation. Um, if you pass that bit, um, then you will be invited to something called Search Assessment Centre. Now, the Search Assessment Centre, again, at the moment, is different. Usually, it's a face-to-face -face assessment centre you attend in person, and there are three um, tasks nearly that you have to do so one of them is a written um a written assessment and that's basically report writing so how would you write a report i think i think what they ask you to do is watch an incident that's happened and then they ask you to write a report on it uh, the next bit is an uh, an interview stage um, and you have a interview with somebody from the police force you it, there are four questions all the questions are the same for everybody and i think you have a minute per question um, so it's quite full on, um, but they give you all of the information beforehand so you know what to expect. Um, and the third task is uh, basically face to face um, role play. So you'll go into a, a particular situation or scenario and you will be tasked with um, a problem or an issue and you'll have to try and deal with that. OK, uh, like I say, um, that sounds um, quite challenging, but all the information about that assessment centre is sent to you if you are invited. And there's also a lot of information on that online and I'll point you in the right direction shortly. Once you've passed search assessment, sometimes, this again is force dependent, you may be invited to an interview by the force. 
So I think out of our four regional police forces, that the only force that still do that are Warwickshire Police. Um, so you'll, it's just a short 20 minute interview um, and they want to, they're, they're, they're a lot, the, the force is a lot uh, smaller Warwickshire. So they've got the ability to be able to interview everybody and really get to know their police constables. Nothing to be um, worried about. It's just that they've got the ability to do it. So they want to. If you pass the interview, if there is one, if there isn't one, you'll go straight from Search Assessment Centre into the force pre-employment checks. Uh, this is often referred to as vetting. Um, there are lots of things involved in vetting. So you'll have to do a fitness test, um, the bleep test. Um, you'll have to do a feet 5.4. If you want to know what that looks like, then I definitely encourage you to watch this video. It gives you a really good idea of what you'll be expected to do um, in terms of your fitness. Um, other than, if you, again, if you don't want to write down that web link, if you go on YouTube and you type in West Midlands bleep test, then you'll find the video. It should be at the top. And the reason that it's wet in West Midlands is just because they, they are the police force that put the video together for you to have a look at. You'll have to do a medical. Um, that's pretty standard. You'll have to, it will have to have a look at your eyesight, uh, look at your body mass index, make sure that you're fit enough. You'll have to go through occupational health to make sure you've got, you, you haven't got any sort of um, underlying um, problems that may stop you from being a police officer. You'll have to have a clean a clean criminal record including your family members now this th these are the questions that we often get um, in our Q&As um, and let me say that it's a very ambiguous um, criteria so I'm saying that you need a clean criminal record some minor offences are accepted by some forces it's very much judged on an individual basis so let's say for example you're 40 years of age and you um, you've been caught speeding um, and you've got nine points on your license, that may not stop you. OK, so it's very, um, it's very subjective. Each force looks at each individual completely on their own merits. And it all depends on uh, exactly what um, what's happened, what your circumstances are. Um, and I would encourage you um, to get in touch with the, the police force. So if, for example, you've got um, an underlying issue with a family member or something that you think may prevent you from applying, get in touch with the police forces and they'll be able to let you know whether that would or wouldn't uh, be a problem or not ultimately. Um, but usually really minor offences are, accept, uh, are accepted. Okay, you will have to do a drug test. Uh, that's pretty obvious. Can't have any police officers that are taking drugs. Um, so that will be, um, you'll have to do a drug test before you go into the police force, but you'll also have to do routine drug tests, as you can appreciate. Um, it's just a, a mandatory requirement as a police officer. Um, and you also um, must consent to providing DNA sample, a DNA sample and fingerprint. Again, that's uh, not unusual. Um, they want to make sure that when uh, you are out in the field catching criminals, that you can't be implicated because they know that your DNA and your fingerprint will exclude you. OK, um, you'll also have to go through a university apprentice, apprenticeship eligibility check. This is just for the p police constable degree apprenticeship. And ultimately, that just means that we, as in I, um, are checking that you're eligible for the apprenticeship. And gen generally, what that means is that you meet the entry criteria. So you've got your math and your English and you've got your level three. Um, also, need to need to make sure that you conform to the um, criteria that enables us to be able to draw down the funding for you. So you've lived in the country for three years, all that kind of stuff. Um, and also, um, you mustn't be enrolled onto another government funded programme at the same time. So say you um, decide to start an engineering apprenticeship and then you think, oh, actually, I want to go into the police force. We must make sure that you are withdrawn from your other apprenticeship first because we can't claw down to lots of funding for you. So just a few technicalities to make sure that we can physically get you onto the programme. And the university does that eligibility check alongside the forces pre-employment check. So they're both happening at the same time. Um, just to bear in mind, this bit's really important, guys. It can take several months to go through this from start to finish. Um, now, that might seem like a really long time, um, but it, it's important to manage your expectations at this stage. You're not going to be able to apply for the job and get the job within three or four weeks. It just doesn't work like that in the in the police world, unfortunately. Um, you could be, uh, we, we've known um, applicants to be in the recruitment process for 12 months sometimes, um, just because of personal circumstances. Um, people have um, got sort of halfway through the recruitment process. And then the force have had to um, 
not advertise certain vacancies but for government reasons or it could be personal circumstances you might break an arm or break a leg or there are lots of reasons why that journey could be a long one but in general it can take maybe six seven months to complete the recruitment process overall so just uh, bear that in mind when you are applying the application form as i've said um, it might differ uh, per force and that's just because of the things that are part of the application process and what different forces have got in place due to COVID-19 at the moment. Um, usually though, um, and this is really important, this is so important guys, make sure you've got evidence of your qualifications okay so you can't just go into the application form and say yeah I've got my math, I've got my English and I've got 96 youth class points. Make sure you've got your certificates to prove that you've, you meet the entry requirements because when you get all the way to the end of the process in the university, me, asks you to present your certificates and you haven't got them, that will delay your start into the police force. Um, at the moment, students are really struggling because they're going to the awarding bodies to get hold of degree certificates, uh, sorry, not degree certificates, uh, GCSE certificates that they've lost or misplaced. Everyone's working from home at the moment. Uh, it, it's a massive problem. So please, please, please make sure that if you haven't got your GCSE certificates, you get them. Um, or obviously, um, if you haven't have or haven't yet got your level three, um, just make sure that you keep them safe. So when I ask you for them, you've got them to hand. Um, as I've mentioned before, the application process may contain a competency-based questions or the behavioural judgment test online. Um, and it's important to say at this point, whether you're required to do the competency-based questions as part of the application form or whether the force directs you to a behavioural judgment test online due to COVID-19, they might decide to keep that for the future. Just make sure that you draw from your personal experience, situations that you've been um, a part of, uh, where you've been asked to demonstrate your ability. Um, think about the way that you articulate those answers on paper. So use a model and all of the forces say this, use a star model, which is what the situation was, what the task was, the action and the result of that. Okay, so put yourself in a situation um, where you um, can answer the question and draw from your personal experience. Um, they're looking for people who can demonstrate their competency, ultimately as police officers. So don't go around the bush, go into it. Make sure that you can absolutely confirm that an experience that you've had as part of your life or whatever conforms to the role of a police officer. A really good example that one girl gave once is um, an, the, uh, a particular police force where we talked about it is a girl was on a bus um, and she um, there was lots of sort of I don't know if I can I don't, I don't know what word to use there was some um, unruly teenagers on the bus um, a group of uh, lads um, uh, quite a few um, old people got onto the bus and the lads wouldn't move for the old people so she asked the um she 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 sort of at the back of the bus she got up and she politely asked the lads to relinquish their seats so the old um the older generation could sit down and they did they got up they moved and it's it's just an uh, an example as silly as it sounds of how she was able to support the community in a very real life environment um so it may seem like um, you perhaps shouldn't draw from those kind of experiences because it sounds silly, absolutely was completely rel relative and relevant to the role of a police officer. So just think about the, that, that that kind of thing when you're completing the application. So I've already explained the search assessment, but just so you can have a look at it again here. Um, obviously, Paul has recorded this, um, so you can listen um, listen back to this. If you don't want to hear my voice, uh, which I can appreciate because they're giving you quite a lot of detail, I can send you this just as a plain version. Um, I can send it to Paul as well, so he's got access to it. Um, so you can literally just look at the, the stages without my voice over the top making things all confusing. Um, so it goes in, it just goes into detail about all the stages of the assessment centre. And also um, the online uh, search assessment centre at the moment obviously is online because of COVID um, and it gives you um, a bit of an idea on the College of Policing website about how you can access that and what you need to sort of complete that search assessment centre. So the university apprenticeship eligibility check, so I touched on this earlier, this is the bit where I said you need to present your certificate, we need to make sure that you um, conform to the normal um, Standard eligibility uh, apprenticeship requirements, which is that you've lived in the country for three years, um, all that kind of stuff. You're not enrolled onto another um, government funded course 
all those kind of things. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about what that involves in more detail. So you'll have to answer some eligibility questions like the ones I've just mentioned. Um, you'll have to do something called a skills radar, which is often referred to often referred to as an initial needs assessment. So this is an online platform. Sorry, I didn't mention that. So this is your, um, it's called an Aptem account. So once you've passed search, you'll be invited to our apprenticeship checking uh, platform, which is called Aptem. And Aptem will ask you to do these things here. So you'll have to complete an eligibility form, You'll have to, which are the questions, the skills radar, and the skills radar is basically asking you to tell us how knowledgeable you are about the, the programme. Uh, now, ultimately, uh, the, the government are expecting us to make sure that you've got a need for the learning. So basically what you'll be expected to do at that point is tell us how much you know nothing about policing and therefore how much you need to come onto the programme. Uh, it might seem like a bit of an odd task, but it's just an apprenticeship requirement. Um, we'll also, like I've said, You'll need to provide evidence of your level two and level three attainment, so all your certificates, um, and you'll also need to sign just to confirm that you've given the, the right the right sort of details. What we'll then do is perform a ULN check um, to ensure that you're not claiming government funding for any other learning. Um, so this is what I mentioned earlier. Now, your ULN number, uh, you may or may not know this, which is your unique learner number, is a number that your college will have. Um, and all your school will have. And it's just a long number. It's um, individual to you. And we can look at that number and we'll be able to see all the learning that you've done, all the grades that you've received. And we'll also be able to see whether you are or whether you have, haven't have enrolled onto another government funded scheme. So if you don't know, don't worry, because we will. That's the point. Uh, that's the point that I'm sort of trying to make there. Uh, like I've said, if you don't have your uh, certificates, get them. Really important. Um, and if you have got them, but you just don't know whether that, that they are acceptable, again, email us and we'll have a look at them for you. I've touched on this a little bit earlier when it comes to having a clean criminal record. But just so you know, um, some things that may exclude you. So you will be excluded if you obviously you're physically unable to meet any of the minimum medical requirements. Uh, so they are the, the fitness tests or your BMI, anything like that. If you're a member of the BMP. Uh, combat 19, combat 18, sorry, or the National Front. Obviously, these are activist parties. You can't be a police officer. You or a member of your family have been convicted in certain crimes. Obviously, I touched on this earlier, so this may not be a worry or a cause, cause of concern. Um, you can ask me questions about this at the end. If I know the answer, I'll let you know. If I don't, I'll point you in the direction of the police forces. This one's an important one. If you've got any offensive, violent, intimidating or discriminatory tattoos, so it doesn't matter where they are in your body, if you've got a discriminatory tattoo, you won't be able to sort of go into the police force. Um, you'll be asked to submit photos of any visible tattoos as well. Um, so uh, a recent example of this, just to give you an idea of um, how some forces can be strict. So some forces are stricter than others. Um, but we've recently had a, a gentleman who has applied to a, uh, one of our police forces and he's got a lion tattoo on his neck um, and the force have said that he can't, that they're not, they're not prepared to accept it because it covers right up until his chin. Um, and obviously, even with his uniform, the public can see a great big lion on his neck. Um, so it's just about standards, really. I think that the forces are, you know, they're at the end of the day, you're, you're serving the community um, and you need to sort of represent um, the community in the right way. And if you have got any um, untoward tattoos, then it may exclude you. But again, all you need to do if you're worried is submit photos and then they'll let you know whether they are or they're not acceptable. If you've got any CCJs, now this is basically counter court judgment. This is if you've got any uh, unpaid debt. So forces are really strict about this one. If you have got any severe death, you won't be able to join. Um, I think severe death is classed as 20,000 and over. Um, I'll have to check that, though. So if any of you do want to ask me questions um, about that you, um, personally, eat, drop me an email um, and I'll have a look into that for you. Um, or like I say, any county court judgments where you're expected to go to court for any out, um, unpaid death, then you won't be considered, unfortunately. Now, this is an important one. You can only apply to one fourth at a time. Uh, and that's for simple reasons. Um, you can't sort of go through the recruitment process with two forces at the same time. You need to choose one folk. Don't put all your eggs into um, every basket. Choose one. 
Um, obviously, um, that, that may sound like a really obvious thing to say, uh, but we have had students before that have applied for maybe even two or maybe three fourths at the same time. And then at the end, uh, when they're when they're about to be deployed into the field, they've had to choose which one that that, that is. And it's quite a difficult decision to make, first of all. Uh, but second of all, police forces don't welcome it. Um, unfortunately, they, they 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 have to obviously relinquish you as a candidate. Uh, it's not a very good situation to be in. You also must be over eighteen and have the have the right to work in the UK. Now, this is a di- that this is a difficult one because in order to become a police officer, you have to be eighteen, but you can apply when you're seventeen. So this is breaking news, folks. You can apply when you're seventeen. Uh, that's fine if you can prove that you've got your 64 UCAS points, you've got your maths and your English, but you're 17, it's fine. All the forces will do is just keep you in what's called their pipeline. So they'll keep you in the pipeline until you're 18. If you've passed all your checks before you're 18, you're just ready to go literally until you are 18. Now that is a false regulation. Um, it's the law. You cannot be a police officer until you are 18 years of age. Um, so, But you're more than welcome to apply at the age of 17. And as I said earlier, the recruitment process can be quite a lengthy one. So you're not going to be waiting around for 12 months. You're probably waiting around for maybe three or four. So that's an important one to bear in mind. If you're not, um, after my after my talk or maybe beforehand, you're a bit sort of dubious about the PCDA and all the DHEP, and you're not sort of ready to go into that world of study and operational work at the same time, it may be the case that you decide to do a degree, which is what um, Ian Ackley will talk about next week with you. Um, you might do a degree, a policing, a professional policing degree, as well as be a special constable at the same time. There are a lot of students that do that, okay? So a lot of students are studying a degree full-time for three years at the university, as well as being a special constable for 16 hours a week voluntary. Um, it, it ultimately, um, it's not, uh, you know, the difference is not really, the route is really no different. Um, it's a very different way of doing it, obviously, um, but it gives you the same experience and the learning is very similar as well. Um, the only, the, obviously, the, 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 the difference between being a special constable and being a police constable is that you don't get paid for being a special, first of all. And second of all, you are required to do a minimum of 16 hours a week. So it may seem like a lot over, you know, over a month. That's, you know, that's 64 hours. Uh, that's 64 hours. However, it's nowhere near the amount of time that you'd be working if you were actually a police constable. Um, and uh, the, the job roles, though, are very, very similar. So if you would like a glimpse into the world of being a police officer, but you're just not ready to go straight in there, then you absolutely should consider doing a degree and being a special constable at the same time. OK, so you'll be pleased to know that uh, I am finished, nearly. Um, there are some links here that I think you might find useful. Like I've said, Paul's recording this and I'll send him the presentation as well. So you've got a copy of all of these links. Um, but it includes all of our um, policing courses on the first one. So you can have a look at all the policing courses that we offer, not just the ones that um, that will help you to become a police constable, All everything policing. Um, you'll also be able to have a look at the entry route um, as in the PQF, which I touched on at the beginning, what what that is, um, all the different entry routes into the police force, um, and that's sort of this bit here. All the information about the, the assessment centre. So as I explained earlier, it used to be a face-to-face environment. It's now an online test because of COVID. Um, I don't know what, which way that's going to go. So once COVID is, is gone, if we can ever envisage a world where COVID is gone, then it might go back to the face-to-face assessment centre or it might stay online. We don't know yet. But all the information about the assessment centre is here on the College of Policing website. Again, if you want to check out the bleak test and what exactly how, uh, how fast you'll have to run, uh, check out this video. Um, and also I've included the uh, vacancy website for all of our partnership police, for, police forces. So you can go and have a look if any recruitment is open at the moment. Uh, I think West Midlands uh, PCDA is currently open. Um, so that's one for you to think about if you're thinking about applying. Um, Staffordshire Police will be open in at the end of March, I believe. Um, we haven't got an exact date yet. I don't know when that is. Um, but keep your eyes peeled for that one. Uh, and Warwickshire and West Mercia, um, I don't think their recruitment for PCDA is op- currently open. Uh, but again, if those are the forces that you that, that you want to look at, then keep your eyes peeled. The one thing to say, folks, uh, 
is if you're interested in applying for the PCDA um, and none of the PCDA uh, vacancies are advertised on any of the websites, you can set job alerts on all of them. So, for example, Staffordshire, even though I've just told you that the recruitment ends at the end of March, go onto their vacancy website, create a job alert, put your email address in and once the PCDA does become available it'll email you, email you and let you know all of these fourth websites do this so definitely worth doing uh, it just means that you don't have to keep remembering to go on every single day uh, and again here's my email address um, if you have any questions or there's anything that you need to know um, then please e email email me uh, any certificates that you've got um, then send them over I'll have a look at them and I'll let you know um, whether they are or they're not acceptable. If you're in a position where you don't have the right UCAS points or you want to look into another degree as part of the university rather than the PCDA or the DHAP, email me. Um, I'll do absolutely everything that I can to make sure I give you the right information. And if it's not me that can answer the question, then I'll absolutely pass, on, pass it on for you. So I've finished talking. You'll be glad to know. That was a long four to five minutes. Uh, terribly sorry that it was ever so detailed, uh, but it's very important, I think, um, when a student or an applicant is considering police, uh, a career in the police force, that they know absolutely everything and the, the process is as transparent as possible. So you know exactly what you need to do to apply. And that's it. That's me done. Wonderful. Thank you ever so much. Uh, there's time now if uh, students have got any questions, if you want to put them in the chat, then uh, we can uh, see about and get them answered. So if you've got anything else that you want to ask, then uh, then please put the question in the chat and uh, we can hopefully answer them. A bit when I start to worry if my can. Oh, here we go. Um, just excuse me, I'll look at to view this. First question Do you have to become a police officer or can you join at a higher level? So, uh, that question is quite a good one, actually. Never had that one before. It all depends on what you consider um, as higher. Um, I mean, as uh, I sort of touched on in the presentation. If you are looking to become a detective constable, then you can do the detective constable degree holder entry programme. Uh, now, I wouldn't say that it was a higher level necessarily. It's just a very different sort of field of work. But in order to do that, you have to have a degree to apply. Um, and uh, in that respect, yes, you can, but you, you would need a degree to be able to apply for it. Um, there are lots of other different roles available. Um, obviously, I've talked um, about the police constable um, degree apprenticeship or how to get in as a police constable or a detective constable. Um, and this uh, this isn't a high uh, level job, but if you want to perhaps look at uh, PCSOs, which are police community support officers, you can also do that as well. Um, there are lots of things available. Um, but if you did want to go in at a higher level, uh, then you would probably have to have a, a, a degree, I would, I would imagine. It all depends on what you're looking at. Um, if you want to work in investigation, for example, this is a question that we have quite a lot then you would need to do a, a, the PCI, which is the Policing and Criminal Investigation degree. So I think what you mean by higher level is either police leadership, in which case you'd need the experience as a police constable or a detective constable in order to get to that job, or if you mean higher level in terms of maybe investigative work or something along those lines, then you would have to have, again, a degree in that field or um, and or a significant amount of experience in that field as well. I hope that answers the question. That's very thorough. Any further questions? OK, here's another one. Uh, can you apply for the for the police for the police apprenticeship when you're in college? Yes, so as I touched on earlier, as long as you're if you're 17, that's fine. You can apply um, it's not a problem at all. Um, but you will need to evidence that you do meet the entry requirements. So the entry requirements are that you've got your maths and English level two um, and you have got a minimum of 64 UCAS points. If you can't prove that at application stage, uh, then you obviously won't be considered. Um, what quite a lot of police forces actually do is accept provisional results, guys. So let's say you're doing A-levels, for example, um, and you're predicted uh, two Bs in a C. You absolutely exceed the, the UCAS points. So as long as you actually achieve those grades or a minimum of 64 UCAS points at the end, uh, then, yeah, you can apply with provisional results and that's fine. 
obviously at the end when I ask you to present you with your certificates you'll just need to prove to me that you've got your maths and English and a minimum of 64 UCAS points I think at the age of 16 you probably won't be able to prove you won't you probably won't be able to have your prisoner results at that point will you so I think it only really applies to the 17 year olds Wonderful. The next question we have, can you become a criminal investigator by starting off with a degree apprenticeship? I mean, never say never. Um, there is no particular pathway at the moment. So if, if you did want to become a criminal investigator, then you would absolutely be able to start with the PCDA and you can absolutely move into that field. Um, so there are lots of different fields that you can go into. But obviously, you would need to do further education because the investigation as a field requires a lot of um, learning and a significant amount of experience. So if you are interested in investigation primarily and you want to look into going into investigative work within the police force, uh, Ella, I would save your question and ask Ian on Thursday next week uh, and see what he personally advises. Now, Ian is a very experienced a member of staff he used to be in the police force and he'll be able to point you in the right direction there um but it is worth saying at this stage that lots of uh, different disciplines in the police force start off by being police constables and police officers so yes you would be able to go into criminal investigation with the pcda but if you are set on investigation and investigation only i would probably start try to start in that field you know what i mean so um Save your question and ask Ian and see what see what um, he recommends. Is that okay? Very good. Thank you so much. Uh, any further question? Oh yeah, another one. Here we go. Uh, if you studied criminology at university, would it help with becoming an investigator, or is a PCI degree the only academic route? Oh, I'm just trying to get my head around that question. If you studied okay. criminology at university, would it help? Yeah, with becoming an investigator, or is a PCI degree the only academic route? So why are you saying is the policing criminal investigation degree the only academic route into be becoming an investigator? Is that what that means? I think so. If you studied criminology at university, would you would you then be able to become an investigator or would you have to do a PCI degree? No, absolutely not. So um it obviously, it, 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 that's absolutely relative and relevant. Um, so criminology is very relevant to being um, in, to, to investigative work. Um, if you wanted to become an investigator within the police force, you wouldn't have to. The, the, the police criminal investigation degree isn't the only degree that would allow you to get into that field. Sorry, I understand the question now. Um, and also, the policing and criminal investigation degree is just a degree that staff at university offer. There are lots of universities. You know, you you may decide to go to. Um, Bournemouth University and do their version of the police and criminal investigation degree or criminology degree. Um, there are absolutely lots of different ways um, in, to sort of getting into investigative work within the force. Um, but yeah, th there are lots of there are lots of degrees that you can do that will enable you to access investigation within the police force. Um, again, absolutely save that question for Ian Ackley because he'll be able to give you a better idea of exactly what um, degrees will. Um, will give you um, a sort of leg up in that field and what the application process looks like once you've completed that degree. Is that OK? It's fantastic. Uh, what I would say, if there's any further questions, we will be putting again this video and the slides up. Uh, but if you do have any further questions, then if you email me, then we can pass them on. Uh, at a later time uh, tomorrow or in the next few days. So I uh, just want to say a big thank you, Beth. That was uh, really great. And uh, I certainly and the students also, I'm sure, greatly appreciate it. Thank you ever so much. No problem at all. Wonderful. Oh, yeah, I've got to stop the video now.